Hello besties, I have done it again. I have gone so viral on TikTok that I am once again on TV. And you may recall this happened to me not that long ago in literally April, I went viral for my first date at Target video. Um, I made a whole video about going viral then. You can watch that if you want. Um, but this time I saw two people post on TikTok a little dating wrapped PowerPoint going over their dates for the year. And I was like, I went on a lot of dates this year and I think I could dig up enough of this data to make my own PowerPoint. So play the clip. Welcome to my 2022 dating wrapped. If there's one thing about me, I love a PowerPoint and apparently a first date because I went on 18 this year. Where did I meet these men? I met one in the wild. We kissed at a bar on New Year's Eve and things really went downhill from there. Tinder and Hinge split pretty evenly. One from Facebook dating. I 1000% would not recommend that. I would rather ask my father to buy me laundry than to get back on Facebook dating. How many dates did we go on? Most of these men only made it one or two. Very few made it past to the third date and the high score was six dates. What did we do? A lot of dinner, drinks, walks. This other category includes smoothies, ice cream, acai bowls, and Target. Who ended things? Me, about half of the time, a few times mutual, and sometimes him. I cried over two of these men, which coincidentally is the same number of parking tickets I got while on dates. This is the amount of money I spent on dates. I wish I had not calculated this number. What could I have done with this money? Literally anything else would have been better. Have I learned anything here? Probably not. The end. Okay, so like a 55 second video. Um, I meant it to be funny. Um, obviously it was like deadpan the entire time. I like never really smiled, but I thought it was funny. I posted it and actually right before I posted it, one of my friends had messaged me on TikTok, one of the videos, and she was like, you should do this. And I was like, I literally just filmed this and I'm about to post it. So this past year, I got to this point where I was like, I feel like I've been going on a lot of first dates. Like, I should probably like write these down or I'm gonna forget like who I even went on a date with. So in my notes app, I just like kept a list of like first dates and it's like the guy's name and then like what we did. Um, and clearly I went on 18 last year. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I would like post occasionally like, oh, I have a first date tonight or oh, I have a second date. Um, I didn't always post just because at some points I was like, I feel like I've been going on a lot of dates recently and like this is all that people are seeing from me. But anyways, I had, I had that list. I track all of my personal spending because I am a nerd. And so I was able to go through my spending transactions this year and be like, oh, that was a date. That was a date. Um, I knew I got two parking tickets. I looked at the list of boys. I was like, I cried over these two guys. Um... And then I went back and I was like, oh yeah, he's from Tinder, he's from Hinge, like who ended things. Some of the ones that were like, we both ended it, some of them were like mutual ghosting, which like normally ghosting isn't great and I hate ghosting people. Um, because one time last year, this guy and I, we ghosted each other. I, a few months later, I go to a networking event, the only open seat is next to him. And we're like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Anyways. But a couple of these guys from 2022, we like mutually ghosted each other where the day ended and I don't think either of us like really wanted to continue. And then like a day or so would go by and you're like, well, they're clearly not feeling it. Do I really need to send a text and like end things? But anyways, this video was getting a ton of views. Um, I saw this TikTok hack. I'm not sure if this is actually a thing. But they were like, if you make a TikTok and you post it and you immediately close the app and like don't open it again for a few hours, the algorithm will like push your video out to people because it wants to send you a ton of notifications so that you open the app back up again. Um, and I don't even have TikTok notifications on. But anyways, I like posted the video, closed my app for maybe three hours. Um, this is a hack I do just for like productivity. I'm like, okay, if I like stop sitting around on TikTok, then my video will get more views. I don't know if that's true, but in this case it worked. I opened it up again. It had like 50,000 views. At this point, the video is now at 4.1 million views. Um, it's been a little over two weeks. Um, so anyways, it started to get a little crazy 
and I have my Instagram linked in my TikTok bio and so people can click that and then find me on Instagram and that is how like reporters would reach out and so I started seeing some random articles pop up. I was obviously not the only person doing the trend so there were a lot of articles that would just like mention me or me along with other people and some of them though, they would be like, oh, we wanna interview you. So I had an interview with Buzzfeed and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Uh, but I was just like part of the article. I was like, I kind of wanna start like a group chat with these other girls and so we can keep in touch and like in a year be like, oh, are you still single or are you gonna make another video? Um, so anyways, had the interview with Buzzfeed. I was supposed to have an interview with the New York Post, I want to say, and that's when I was traveling to Omaha to thrift and I emailed back and she was like, oh, I'm kind of losing my voice. Like, I'll just email you the questions. I was like, okay, perfect. And I sent them back like three hours later and she was like, oh, sorry, we already published the story. These didn't make it in. I was like, okay, you could have told me like had a deadline and I would have like responded sooner. Um, and then the same thing kind of happened with Newsweek where like the reporter reached out in my DMs and I was like, yeah, okay. Like, do you want to just send me the interview questions here or do you want to have a call and she's like oh I can just send him here and I like responded and she never answered I was like oh this is weird but then here's where it gets really good a reporter from the Jennifer Hudson show reached out a producer a producer she slid into my dm she's like hey I'm a producer blah 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 um and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And she's like, would you have time for a call? And I was like, yeah, let me know. And I didn't hear from her for a few hours, but I kept like checking my DMs. And then another producer from the Drew Barrymore show reached out and she was like, hey, we're interested too. Like, can we set up time to talk or like email? And I was like, yes. And so it was like both of them back to back in one day. And the Drew Barrymore producer was a bit more responsive on like, she was like, okay, we're just wanting to show your video. Like, can you download it and send it to us? Can you send us your PowerPoint? We're gonna have you sign all of these things. And so I did. And to wrap up that story right now, um, so I signed everything and they emailed me back maybe last week and they were like, oh, we just filmed. Like this segment was great. We're looking for it to air January 9th. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm going to be on the Drew Barrymore show. Drew Barrymore, well, she's already seen my face. She knows what I look like. That means <laughs> she can dream about me now. Have you guys heard that thing that like in your dreams, you can only like see other people that you've seen in real life? Anyways, Drew Barrymore can dream about me now. So that's the end of that. But then the Jennifer Hudson show, I like scheduled a call with that producer for that night. I like did my hair, like looking real cute. I set up a ton of lights around my desk so that the lighting would be good. Um, and she just like asked me a bunch of questions. She was like, okay, I'm going to record this Zoom. And you know that I'm going to edit it and kind of pitch it to the team to see if we want you on the show. And I was like, okay, perfect. And I was just my charming, charismatic self, um, you know, cracking jokes, like telling funny stories about my dating life. And she was like, you know, I relate to a bunch of this too. I had just seen you on my TikTok page and I was like, oh my gosh, this was me. So she like definitely understood what it felt like. And at the end of the call, she goes, okay, if we decide to have you on the show, um, we will fly you out and we'll like put you up in a hotel. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so she was like, I'm gonna talk to the team. Like, I'll let you know. And I was like, okay, great. And I was like, this is so crazy because last time I went viral, I got like almost 900,000 views. And I was on Inside Edition, ABC News, like a bunch of like printed articles, but no one was like, we're gonna fly you out. Um, so this time, like obviously that number of views like definitely mattered. And people are always like, oh, are you getting paid for these? And I'm like, no and I'm like I don't know what to even be asking for because I'm worried that if they say hey we want to put your video on our show whatever and I say okay it'll be a hundred two hundred three hundred dollars a thousand I have no idea um that they'll just be like oh no that's okay we'll find someone else uh especially with this because there's so many people who made dating rap videos 
um, it's not just me, like actual like TikTokers are making these videos now. So my PowerPoint was really good though. Um, anyways, so I have not made any money off of this, but I was like, you want to fly me out? That's crazy. And so the next day was Tuesday and I was at work, you know, just working. I would check my phone every once in a while. And she was like, oh, send me your number so we can text, blah, blah, blah. And I did that. And then at one point late in the evening, I had finished work. I was sitting on my couch and I opened my text messages and I saw that the producer was typing. And so I closed it really quick and I went to my camera and I started recording like a front facing video. And I caught the moment where she said I was going to be on the show. So here's that clip. Okay, I'm waiting for the producer of the Jennifer Hudson show to, to text me back. So yeah, it was crazy. I started like jumping up and down. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. And I was texting her back. And so her text was like, we would love to have you on the show. Can you fly out tomorrow? And I was like, girl, I will make it work. And so then I text her. I like sent that. And then I was like, what do I wear? And, you know, she called me and we talked a bit and she was like, okay, you want bright colors, like stay away from patterns. I was like, okay. And I was looking at my closet and I was like, listen, I look really good in like shades of brown or black. Bright colors that I have are usually like patterned. <laughs> so I looked at my closet. I was like, I have no idea. Um, so I went to the mall. I was planning to wear like jeans and a cute top, um, you know, just the basic um, so I went to the mall because I was like, I don't really like the jeans that I have. A lot of them are distressed and I just like, don't want that for television. And so anyways, I went to the mall for a while. Um, I forgot how much I hate retail shopping, especially when it's like stressful conditions. So I got home, I looked through my inventory and I found this Anthropology Maeve sweater that I really like because I was like, oh, this is bright. This is like a good color. And then I found this Madewell top that I like. It is a little like scratched up on the front which you can't really tell but I was like I don't know how the cameras will do so I was like I'll just bring them both and so anyways I planned for the next day I would work like a half a day and then we'd fly out at like 3 p.m and so we we were like you know here's what flights we want to book and they booked them for us and we flew southwest and that was my first time flying southwest where it's just like unassigned seating um and we had four flights total and we only had to sit with another person in our row one time. So they told me I could bring a friend. I brought my friend Taylor uh, because she has unlimited PTL. And when I started going viral, she texted me this, like, if you get invited on any brand trips, like just remember me, I'll be a great hype woman, blah, blah, blah. And so I texted her and I was like, oh my God, they said, yes, they're gonna fly me out to LA. Do you wanna go? And it was really stressful for her too. She was like out of work party. She's like, I need someone to watch my pets if I'm going to be gone. But ultimately she said yes. So the then I had to message my work manager. I was like, listen, this is probably the craziest message anyone will send you today, possibly even this year. I was like, I went viral on TikTok and now I'm going to be on the Jennifer Hudson show and they're flying me out tomorrow. And I was like, I'm going to be gone tomorrow through Friday when they fly me back, whatever. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And she was like, now I have to have my kid find this video so I can see it. And then, I don't know, like five minutes later, she messaged me again on Slack and she was like, my kid found your video and they had already seen it. I was like, oh, that's wild. But then I was like, she probably watched my other videos too. But anyways, I was like, that is funny that her kid had already seen it. So my manager knew my friend Taylor was going to come with me and the next day I like worked a half a day. I was like sitting in meetings like pretending like everything was normal but really in my head like during the meetings I was like oh I gotta pack like my glasses and I need to make sure my phone charger is in my bag and I need this and this. Um, so anyways it just went like on and on and on and it was crazy and then so finally it was like lunchtime. I was like okay I'm logging off going to the airport got my friend Taylor. We get there, we fly to Denver, have a layover. Um, and then our layover in Denver was like nearly four hours. Like it was a pretty long layover. We finally get on our flight to LA, which is only like another two-ish hours from there. So we fly to LA, it's like dark when we land. I got a window seat, so I got some nice like out the window pictures. And we, we land, I turn my phone off of airplane mode. And the first notification that comes through is from one of the producer, 
producers of the Jennifer Hudson show. And it's like, we are so sorry due to circumstances out of our control, taping is canceled tomorrow. And we were like, I read it and was like, oh my God. And I like touched my friend Taylor. I was like, Taylor, read this. And like her jaw just dropped. And we were like, what? And the rest of the email was essentially like, you still like have your hotel for tonight. If you want to fly home tomorrow, you can do that or you can stay and fly home Friday like planned. Um, and I emailed them back. I was like, you know, we were very excited for the show. This isn't what we wanted, of course, but we'll make the most of our time in LA. And also in their email, they had said like, oh, we'll figure out about rescheduling. And I was like, do you think that's actually going to happen? Like, what are the odds? just because I know like news moves quickly and so I didn't know if this was something that they would still be interested in filming later because they had said they were taking a holiday break from filming. So I was like, do you think that'll actually happen? Um, so then we're at the airport, we're walking through the airport, we're like, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Should we go to Disney? And we're like, tickets are like 160 bucks. Both of us came on this trip thinking we'd spend like no money at all. Um, we were like, do we do that? Like, do we just like go do a bunch of touristy stuff? Like, are we gonna go hiking? Also keep in mind, like we brought clothes for the airport and to be on TV. Like we don't have a lot of options to pick from. So we thought about Disney, um, ultimately decided, no, we'll do other stuff. And honestly, I think it ended up working out well. So we like woke up, they included a stipend for food at the hotel. Um, so we each had like $75 per day and we were like, okay, $75 is like, yeah, it's California, but that's like still a lot of food. Like the restaurant wasn't crazy expensive. Um, so anyways, we like, I woke up at the butt crack of dawn. It was like 5.45 AM, even though I had like stayed up really late. My body was like, oh, in central time, like you're gonna be late for work, get up. And so I was just like in the bathroom, like on my phone. I was like, you know, reading their emails. I was like, what can we do today? And I I mentioned this on Instagram. I have an ex-boyfriend who lives in Los Angeles and we're still like friends. Like there's no hard feelings there. And I was like, do I call him and ask him if he will like drive us around all day? But then I was like, I don't want him to have to be the third wheel to us because we're going to be like crack it inside jokes all day long and I don't think he wants to deal with that so I did not end up calling him <laughs> I know some of you are disappointed um so anyways we started the day we were like we're gonna go to Santa Monica Pier and then kind of like work our way back to the hotel from there um we get this uber and they're still taking COVID very seriously in California um which I understand there's so many people there and there was like this plastic shield between the front of the car and the back and Anyways, so there was no air vents in the back of the car, so there was really like no air circulating to us. And this ride from our hotel to the pier was supposed to be like an hour long. And we were like, okay, you know, like it's rush hour, we gotta do what we gotta do. Um, during this ride, like I started getting so warm and I was like, well, let me take off my jacket. Like I'm wearing a sweater and a jacket and probably just like uncomfortably warm. And <laughs> I was just like still so sweaty and I didn't bring my water bottle with me because I didn't want to carry it around all day. And like, I was just feeling so bad. I was like, am I going to vomit? And I was like focusing on my breathing and I was sitting there thinking like, if I'm going to vomit, if I vomit in the Uber, you have to pay like a hundred dollar, $150. You have to pay some cleaning fee if you vomit in an Uber. So I was like, if I take my wallet out of my Lululemon belt bag and I vomit in my belt bag and throw that away, I'm only losing $38 there. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to vomit, but if I have to, um, it was either that or vomit on my Patagonia jacket. Mm, no, not going to do that. So anyways, like I felt horrible. I was just like looking out the window, like focusing on my breathing. I'm sweating so much. Like I can feel like my stomach start to get a little sweaty. And I was like, oh man. And I look over at Taylor and she's just like staring straight ahead. And I'm like, okay, she's just like zoning out. We get close to the pier and I like roll down my window for some fresh air. And because I feel like I'm going to vomit, I'm like, at least I can like lean out of the car if I have to. And I'm like, okay, it's cooler outside. Like, that's good. And the driver's still like 
maybe a couple blocks away from the pier. And I'm like, you can drop us off right here. This is fine. And she goes, oh, the, right here? We're like, yeah. And I get out of the car and Taylor gets out and Taylor's like, I feel so sick. She's like, I gotta sit down. I was like, I think I'm gonna vomit. And luckily we were right by a trash can and I like dry heaved a few times and then like some spit came up the other time. Like no food, fortunately. But it was just like so bad. And I was like, maybe it's something we eat at the hotel. Maybe it's just that like, also it was so hot and it was like stop and go traffic the whole time. So we're like this in the Uber anyways. We like got bottles of water. We're like, let's just sit on a bench until we feel better and then we'll walk around. The day got much better from there. <laughs> like really rough start to the trip. Um, and the producer in the meantime, she had texted me. She's like, hey, call me when you get a chance. Um, and I was like, I think I'm gonna vomit right now. I'm gonna wait to call her. But it ended up, the pier actually ended up being really good because we were outside. It was like not too cold. Um, we just walked around a bit and it was good. And our plan from there was to go to the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So that's what we did. We headed to the Hollywood Walk of Fame to see all the stars. And we started walking around. And it's really funny because everyone walking around there who's like a tourist is walking with their head down to read the names on the stars. So that's what we did. Um, and after a few blocks, you're like, oh my gosh, there's like a lot of stars. And we Googled it and it's 15 blocks of stars. Like we did not even walk the whole thing. And we walked around for probably an hour there. But we had like gone into some little gift shops um, and you know, just kind of looked around. And from there, we were like, let's go to Griffith Observatory because it's free. And we heard you can see the Hollywood sign from there. Um, so then we got another Uber. All of these Ubers we got in, it was so warm in their car. It's like they don't use AC. I'm like, maybe it's so they get better gas mileage. But we were like uncomfortable in all of them. And we made a signal. We were like, if you feel sick in the Uber, like tap my hand twice so that I know. Um, and like, yeah, we probably could have spoke up to the drivers, but sometimes they would be like talking on the phone anyways. We just suffered in silence in the back. And so anyways, we went to go for the observatory. That was really cool, like view of the city. Um, my friend didn't have her vaccine card, so we didn't go inside, but it was pretty cool outside. We weren't as close to the Hollywood sign as we expected. Um, but anyways, while we were there, the producer called me and I missed the call and I was like, well, I'll just call her back right now because it's not too loud right here. Um, and they were like, okay, you know, we're looking at other dates to reschedule. We're so sorry. And I was like, oh, awesome. And, you know, they sent me some dates and I'm like, this one will work best. And they were like, perfect. Like our travel coordinator will reach out to you with, um, flight information later. And they were like, you can bring someone again, either the same person or a different person. And I had told Taylor, I was like, I feel kind of bad that I didn't bring my mom this first time, but it was so last minute that I didn't think it would like work out well. Um, and I was like, Taylor, you already got a free trip to LA. I'm going to bring my mom this next time. And so my mom's excited to go. She also doesn't know what she's going to wear. Um, but I think we'll have a good time. So anyways, after that, we just like went back to the hotel. We had, we still had like $110 of food credit. So I got like a nice salmon dish and she got some chicken pasta. Um, and then we split an appetizer of mac and cheese. And at the end, our server was like, do you guys want to go boxes for any of this? We were like, well, we're not going to eat it before we leave tomorrow morning at like 5 a.m. We we're like, no, we don't need to go boxes. And then I was like, can we actually get some cheesecake to go? And so she gave us some cheesecake to take back to the room. And so we ate that like a couple hours later. And then that morning we... So the show had set up chauffeurs for us to and from the airport. Um, so it was like a nice SUV with like mini water bottles in the back and like the guy was wearing a suit who was the driver. Um, so a much better experience that time and we made it through the airport with plenty of time to spare. Um, and then I was like, this is so crazy because I told like all of my coworkers, a bunch of my friends, a bunch of you guys like, oh, I'm going to LA to be on the Jennifer Hudson show. And then it didn't happen. <laughs> and I was like, what am I gonna tell people? And so during our layover on the way back was my work company Christmas party. 
and my manager like brought it up then she's like Amber like can I share about that and I was like well actually there's been some new developments so why don't I tell the story and so I told them all how it went viral I flew out there and then they canceled the show and they were all like oh my gosh that's crazy and I was like yeah but they're planning to reschedule and then my team at work pulled up my TikTok and watched the video and I was like oh my god you guys that you know way too much about my dating life now. Um, I can't believe this happened again because that happened literally the last time I went viral, but with a different set of coworkers. Um, so yeah, it's it's been crazy. And like also when my friend and I flew out, we had like a shuttle driver at the airport. He's like, oh, where are you going? And we're like, LA. And he's like, oh, for work or play. And we were like, for play. And he's like, what are you going to do there? And I was like, I'm going to be on the Jennifer Hudson show. So we like explained it to him. And then when we checked in at the hotel, the concierge, he was like, oh, you're here for the Jennifer Hudson show. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I went viral on TikTok and now I'm going to be on the show. And he was like asking what it was about. And I was like, oh, it's my dating wrapped. And he's like, so what happened? You like fell in love and got married? I was like, no, I'm still single. <laughs> So anyways, I told all of these people I was going to be on the show and then it didn't happen, but it will be happening now, it sounds like. I'm waiting for them to reach out to schedule flights, um, but this way, this may be like the ideal scenario where I got two trips to LA, one with a friend where like we got to, got to explore and then I'll get one with my mom and she'll get to see me be on TV. So... Yeah, it's been crazy. Totally unexpected. I, man, when I posted this video, some of the questions that like the producers or journalists asked me, they were like, did you expect it to like get this many views? I was like, no, like I've gone viral before, but never this much. And it's just been so crazy. I got like 4,000 followers on Instagram from this, which makes me like pretty close to getting monetized because you have to have 10,000 followers on TikTok to get monetized and I am not there yet. So maybe one day soon, probably in the next year, I would say, um, maybe a year from now, I should like stitch this video and be like, here's how much I'm making off of TikTok. Watch it be like $3. Anyways, <laughs> it's been so crazy and I cannot believe this happened. I will say I did get a lot of mean comments on the video from men. Um, any like swear word you could think about women, any curse word, um, yeah, that's probably been commented on my video. I would like wake up and spend like 10 minutes just like deleting nasty comments from men. Um, so like that wasn't great, but the good definitely outweighed the bad. There were a lot of comments from women being like, this is iconic or like, I relate to this or like, oh, I'm so appreciative for my husband or wife. And I was like, okay, good. Um, a lot of people were asking about like, oh, how did you learn nothing from this? And I'm like, it was a short video. Like I had to wrap it up. Um, I learned to always put enough time on my parking meters. I learned that if you post on the internet, people are going to be mean to you, but you might get to be on TV. Um, anyways, a ton of stuff. Also, I was supposed to be on America's Newsroom live um, and I had planned. He's like, okay, it's going to be tomorrow. Like I'll send you a Zoom link, whatever. And then he was like, okay, we actually have to cancel your segment. <laughs> we have more important news to cover. I was like, I totally understand. And he was like asking about rescheduling and it didn't work out, work out because I had to fly out to LA. Um, so I was like, darn it. I really wanted, I wanted to be on live TV. Like that would have been so cool, but maybe next time <laughs> I keep going viral for videos that I make when I'm single. So if I get a boyfriend, I'm like, what? am I gonna make videos about? I'm afraid if I get a boyfriend, I'll stop being funny. That would be a shame. <laughs> but so then this past weekend, we go back from LA. Uh, my friend had a Christmas party that we went to and her friend there like knew that I had gone viral. She's like introducing me to everyone. She's like, the TikTok star. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no. 
And then a day later, my other friend had a holiday party and I went and I ended up explaining to everyone like, oh yeah, I went viral, blah, blah, blah. And like, there were some old coworkers there and they ended up pulling up my video to watch. And I have this video of them watching my video. So yeah, so many people now know. Um, have I gotten a boyfriend from this? No. There have been some comments that have been like, oh, I like know someone in Des Moines that like you should date, he's working on his master's degree, blah, blah, blah. Or like, oh, I have a brother and like you two would be great, but he lives in Canada. Or just random people being like, oh my God, I love this, I would date you. Um, and then I go to their profile and it's like an anonymous profile photo and like there's no information about them. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not, I don't want to do that. So my strategy for this next year, some people think I should get on Bumble. I'm like, I don't really like having to send the first message, but maybe I need to, I need to put myself out there. Um, or, so the money I spent, approximately $30 a month. I was like, I could take that $30 a month and I spend it in ways that would allow me to meet men. So either like taking some workout class or like doing trivia at a bar or whatever, or just like buying men in bars drinks to flirt with them. Um, that is a possibility. We'll see. I'm currently my Tinder profile is paused and I deleted Hinge a while ago, um, but my profile's paused so no one can see it. Only people who have already matched with can message me and I'm not really doing that because now I'm like, the holidays are coming up. I'm going to fly out for the Jennifer Hudson show. I'm gonna be back for like a week and then I'm going on a cruise and then it's gonna be my birthday. So, you know, maybe I'll give this a shot in February. <laughs> um, so yeah, right now I'm not too worried. Right now I'm not looking and people say that's when it happens. So I'm testing your theory right now. But <laughs> the producer on the Jennifer Hudson show, she asked me, she's like, have you ever been to LA? And I was like, yeah, actually, I have an ex-boyfriend who lives out there. And she's like, oh, don't tell producers that or we're going to look him up and he's going to be on the show. And I was like, that would be so funny if they like brought him out. I don't think that will happen. But anyways, I have to keep his identity anonymous. Now I have to scrub the internet of any evidence that we ever knew each other. I don't, I think it'll be fine. Um, so yeah. That was, that was me going viral the second time. Insanely viral. Um, yeah, hopefully at some point I will start making money off of TikTok. That is my goal for 2023. I have also written down one of my goals for 2023 is to get a boyfriend. So come back here, find out if that happens. Um, you have to write down your goals for them to happen. And I finally wrote it down. So here we go. I'm ready to work towards my goal. I can make it a smart goal. By the end of 2023, I want a boyfriend. Tangible, measurable, not tangible, timely. Anyways, this is now just rambling. Thanks. But thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. My watch hours are getting real close to me getting monetized here. So thank you all so much for your support. Love you. Bye. I wish I had someone to give this award to. You're close enough. <laughs> Welcome to Late Night with Taylor and Amber. And Late Night with Amber. We mean 6.30. 30. <laughs> On tonight's menu, cheesecake. That does not look appetizing. Mmm. <laughs> I'll put Bye. this in my YouTube video. Will you cut that part out? No. <laughs> Do I need to sign a waiver? <laughs> Do you give me permission to post? I guess. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> you want the crust? No. I <laughs> just want the filling. Okay. I think this might be my last bite. Okay, if you like and comment right now, we'll send you a crust. <laughs> um, a comment with the most <laughs> likes. <laughs> we'll get sent the crust. Comment below why you should get it. Um, 
if the cheesecake was really good, the crust was decent. We're just so full of free hotel food. Only if you live in the U.S. too. I will not refrigerate it. It's being shipped. Probably get there four days later. 